on Larry King Now, genius star Seth Gable. I play Michael Besso, who's Einstein's best friend throughout their whole life. They met at uh, college. They grew up in a time when science and physics especially were uh, dominated by just hundreds of years of the status quo, and that was not to be rebelled against or challenged in any way. Do you like darker roles? I tend to get them. I don't know. I, I, I try to keep it together as an actor and a father of two children, and I feel like maybe I get the dark roles because that's a catharsis for me. Plus, you know him from HBO's Silicon Valley, the hilarious Jimmy O. Yang. Are you now recognized on the street? A lot of people come up to you? Yeah, more and more every season, and um, I think it's a bit of a weird thing when you're Asian and there's not that many Asian actors out there. People always like talk amongst their friends and like, oh my God, is that is that the guy? Is that the guy from Silicon Valley? <laughs> They're both next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest, Seth Gable, the acclaimed actor known for roles in shows like Fringe, Salem, and American Horror Story. Seth currently stars in National Geographic's first ever scripted series, Genius, telling the story of Albert Einstein. Genius airs Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the National Geographic Channel. How did you get into it? How'd you get this role? Uh, how did I get this role? Um, my father-in-law happens to be producing it, but I don't think it's a nepotistic thing. Uh, Your one of the writers, Ron Howard. Ron Howard, yeah. Um, but there's a writer on the show, Kelly Solders, who was working on the show Salem that I was doing, and she went to that staff and recommended me, and Ron was kind enough not to say no, so I think that's how I got in. And the role you play is? I play Michael Besso, who's Einstein's best friend throughout their whole life. They met at uh, college. And uh, I feel like Besso was one of the first people to really recognize Einstein's genius and really encourage him. Um, they grew up in a time when science and physics especially were uh, dominated by just hundreds of years of the status quo, and that was not to be rebelled against or challenged in any way. And Einstein was one of the first people to, to stand up and say, you know, I, I don't think this is right. I feel like there's new ideas. And, and Besso encouraged that. Was Besso a scientist? He was, yeah. He was a physicist and an engineer. Did he know Einstein in Germany? Uh, yeah, they met at Zurich Polytechnic, so not Germany. Later on in life, they knew each other in Germany. But um, they met at this great school, Zurich Polytechnic, and, um, and yeah, they really hit it off. Einstein called him the greatest sounding board in Europe, so he would bounce ideas off of him, and Besso would always have a... He'd understand enough to poke and prod him and be a catalyst for new ideas. Uh, it's getting great reviews. What makes this series extraordinary? Well, we really haven't seen Einstein portrayed in film, not to this extent. I don't think I've ever seen it. Yeah, yeah. They, they considered doing it as a movie uh, for many years because there's a lot to deal with, uh, especially, I think, the time period. I mean, the 20th century overall is filled with extraordinary events, and Einstein was really at the center of that. I feel like his, um, his overall you know, ability to, to challenge and rebel against authority I feel like that's a spirit that uh, you know we can recognize. And how many episodes are there? Uh, there's ten total. Are they going to do a different science one every year? Yeah, the concept it's going to be kind of like uh, American Horror Story or something, where every year it'll change. Instead of being something horrific, it'll be a genius that we can all, you know, look up to. The Prisker family's behind this in some way, right? Prisker family? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, the Prisker family out of Chicago. Uh, uh, Gigi Pritzker. Oh, yes, that's right. She said, having people like Einstein in the forefront of popular culture and really raising scientists to the level of celebrity is important. So people who sit passively and don't think of themselves as scientists or understanding science can really get a grasp of why it's so important to support science and breakthroughs and research development. Yeah. Is a lot of the show technical? No. I mean, I it's mean, there. We have breakdown of formulas and... I. In layman's terms, sure, yeah. and there's CGI there to help you, you know, understand it. Um, what I love about physics, especially Einstein's ideas, is when you get deep into it, it becomes more and more spiritual in nature. You start to learn that our perception defines reality, that nothing is, uh, is predetermined or definitive. Uh, it's all relative. So you learned a lot. I did. My favorite um, subject in college, uh, I went to NYU and we were forced to take math and science classes. And I actually took a class called 20th Century Concepts of Time, Space, and Matter. And it was all about these ideas. And so to suddenly be on a set um, next to Einstein talking about them, it was, it was really extraordinary. Do they get into the A-bomb? 
They do. Yeah, they cover everything. I mean, the amount of information that they condensed into 10 episodes is immense, but also the amount of personal time that you spend with him and the insight that you gain into his flaws as a human being, it's really insightful. Uh, who's playing Einstein? Uh, Jeffrey Rush plays the older version, uh, who's an extraordinary actor, and also Johnny Flynn plays the younger version, who I think uh, will be on everyone's radar. He's a brilliant guy. Do they have him as opposed to atomic energy being used for war? Uh, definitely, definitely. I mean, one of the first things you see in the first episode is Einstein is against nationalism. He actually renounces his German citizenship because he is one of the first to see that this idea, this concept of having countries divided by invisible lines is ridiculous. So, I mean, war in general, of course, that's ridiculous. Your wife is very, she's very known as Bryce Dallas, right? Have you worked with her? Uh, I've worked with her on a Funny or Die video, but that's the extent. I just did a Funny or Die myself. You did? Yeah. Nice. I'll have to see that. It's, oh, I'll go to it now. They have me as a head. Just a just head. A, head a talking head. It's, literally. It's 30 years, 40 years from now, and I'm interviewing people. Uh-huh. Are you in a jar? I'm in a jar. <laughs> Correct. Were you on Futurama as well? I feel like you could have been one of those no, talking I don't heads. No, think yeah. it was totally new to me. It's celebrating 60 years in the business. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Does, did your... Father in law directed an episode? He directed the first episode. I wasn't in that one, unfortunately, but uh, it was pretty fun um, being a part of the same project together. I feel like um, we've worked separately enough that it's okay to kind of do that now, and it was really fun to be able to talk about the same thing. And, uh, All right, what was uh, Einstein's genius, other than being smart? <sighs> what was his genius? I mean, I feel like his special ability, if he were to be a superhero of some kind, was to use his imagination. And that's something he encouraged in all of us. I mean, he would conduct thought experiments where he could simulate in his mind um, all of these different scenarios. So he could have a train going close to the speed of light without actually doing it in reality because he trusted this thing and what it was capable of. Um, I think what the show also brings to light is that genius is not just one person. Albert Einstein, what we see as, you know, his legacy is not just one person. It's a collection of many people, of many moments. Your character is one of them, right? Yeah. Your character is very bright, too, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's able to keep up with Einstein, so I assume so. After the break, we'll talk about Seth's roles in hit shows like Fringe and Salem, plus a little game of If You Only Knew. Stay with us. Seth Gable's our guest, one of the stars of Einstein, airing on National Geographic, Tuesday nights at 9. It's National Geographic's first... Scripted, scripted series. Scripted series. Yeah. Now, prior to Genius, you starred in shows like American Horror Story, Salem, Fringe. Is safe to Do you like darker roles? Uh, I tend to get them somehow. Salem about the witch trials? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, yeah, my character on that, I play Cotton Mather, who was kind of leading the persecution of the witches and was having all sorts of existential crises. Um, I don't know. I, I, I try to keep it together as an actor and a father of two children, and I feel like maybe I get the dark roles because that's a catharsis for me. Do you feel like... I think everyone wants to scream from time to time, yeah. especially when you're raising children in the modern world. Uh, the key is to channel it into the right place. The Einstein role isn't dark, though. No, that's a light one. That one, for me, was just pure fun. Um, I mean, I've loved physics for a long time, and to get to actually be in that world talking to Einstein, uh, nothing compares to that. I once asked Dr. Edward Teller, who invented the hydrogen bomb, uh -huh. why did we fear physics when we went to school? Hmm. And he said, because they teach it. It shouldn't be called physics. It should be called life. Yeah. Physics affected everything you did the moment you opened your eyes. Well. I mean, it caused us to open our eyes. I mean, the fact that you can um, play all of this in reverse in your mind, and it all leads to a single point of singularity. I mean, it's insane. Now, American Horror Story tends to bring back its cast. Are you going back for another one? I hope so. I worked with Ryan Murphy a long time ago on Nip Tuck, and uh, he's one of the best in the business. Okay, what else is on the acting horizon? What's next? I don't know. I'm trying to be, Salem just ended. Genius, I'm obviously proud of, and I'm very glad that there's no writer strike happening because uh, I'm on yeah. the market looking for something good. And uh, like your father-in-law, you want to direct? Uh, eventually, yeah. All right, we play a little game, Seth, of, of if you only knew. I just throw okay. a question. Who was your childhood celebrity crush? Uh, 
Kelly Preston from Twins. <laughs> Secret talent. Secret talent. Um, I have the ability to recognize famous people's voices in commercials within a few words. Really? As long as I know the person in general, I, within a few syllables, I can, I can pinpoint who they are. I miss Gene Hackman for United Airlines. Yeah, beautiful Friday voice. friendly sky. A timber. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Best advice you ever received? Uh, really by example, uh, my father-in-law, Ron, um, just him being a good person. He is a good person. Uh, you know, working hard. Uh, he has no big ego. Yeah, yeah. I very quickly learned there's no point in having an ego in this business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, worst advice you ever got? Hmm. Worst advice I ever got. Uh, I feel like just that that voice, the ego voice inside your head that talks. I feel like that one usually don't doesn't. Don't go to it. Yeah, don't go to that. It Biggest risk you've taken. Things. Biggest risk. Um, Sidney Lumet, uh, the director. Um, when I was first starting out in New York, I was supposed to audition for him, and I initially went to a casting director and pre-read. And they said I was good enough to go on to meet Sydney. And then I got a call saying, oh, they, they've had a scheduling issue. They'd prefer for you not to go in. I think they want to give the role to someone else. And I pretended I didn't get the message. And I went in and met Sydney and ended up getting the role. So that was fun. What movie? Uh, it was actually for a TV show he was doing called 100 Center Street. But I was obviously a huge fan of his Great work. Great director. Incredible. Uh, guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure playing video games with my son. <laughs> TV series you'd like to guest star on? Ooh, uh, Westworld would be fun. Black Mirror, Black Mirror, I'll go with that. Something you're awful at? What am I awful at, golf? What's a luxury you can't live without? Uh, Zevia, it's a, it's a soda that's sweetened with stevia. Stevia, yeah. <laughs> it's good. I like it too. <laughs> Who would you trade places with for a day? Uh, probably the president. This president? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what other era in history would you like to experience? Uh, I'd prefer to check out the future as long as it's safe. <laughs> Otherwise, mid 20th century. Is there something you long to believe to be true but realize isn't? Uh, that I long to believe to be true but realize isn't. Um, I long to believe that, that extraterrestrials exist, that there are intelligent ones out there that could perhaps give us a few tips. Is there something people don't know about you? I'm sure there's plenty that people don't know about me. Uh, something in particular? Uh, I don't know. Do the physicists think about things like afterlife? Oh, yeah, definitely. Einstein wrote a letter to Besso's uh, wife after Besso passed away. Uh, and he said that physicists know that time is merely an illusion, that the past, present, and future are all together all the time and that um, what we experience is linear time that's that's not what is really there and so that we're all kind of united in so some we go realm. on in some form we go on we you know what we consider the past is already existing in some other moment I guess Woo. yeah a little heavy yeah <laughs> thank you sir thank you so much my big thanks to our guest, Seth Gable. Be sure to tune in to Genius, airing Tuesdays at 9 Eastern on the National Geographic Channel. And when we return, I'll be joined by the hysterical star of Silicon Valley, Jimmy O. Yang. Stay with us. Welcome back to Larry King Now. Joining us now is stand-up comedian and actor Jimmy O. Yang. He stars as Jin Yang on the hit HBO comedy Silicon Valley, currently in its fourth season. Earlier this year, Jimmy made his dramatic film debut alongside Mark Wahlberg and Kevin Bacon in Patriot's Day. You have become, Jin Yang uh -huh. has become... The number one fan favorite. Um, are you stealing scenes? I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Uh, I had to do that in the beginning because he started off just two lines in a couple episodes in the first season and then just a couple more there, a couple more here. And now season four, he's really, um, you know, coming to his own. So. Why have they elevated you? Or have you done it yourself? I think it's it's a little bit of both, right? I, I think the, the writers are just so great and, and they're so intuitive uh, on the show. So when I first auditioned for the show, this was before it was even called Silicon Valley, before it was even a thing. Jing Yang was a pretty big character. Never heard back from that audition, right? And then they rewrote the whole script, and Jing Yang was kind of written out, the character was written out in the process. And then they came back on 
episode three of season one with just two lines, and that's the part I got. And then more and more, you know, I guess Mike Judge and, and the guys, they're awesome, and, and they see that I can improv with the guys, and people are kind of taking a liking to this guy. So they write me like more and more stuff instead of just kind of like a one-dimensional, you know, Chinese guy. It's become more and more. Uh, and they I keep your last name. Well, <laughs> I don't think that was intentional. I think it was. Uh, Is it wasn't that a common name. I guess yeah, Yang. I think it's it's probably the third most common Chinese name. My real Chinese name is not Yang. It's Ouyang. It's Ouyang. It's two mm. words. Well, like Irish. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is a much more uncommon name. I guess it was a no-brainer to take the role, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, working. I mean, with it made you. Yeah, for sure. Um, and like I said, at first when I took it, it was just like a guest star. I didn't think much of it. But then when I saw the cast working with them, I was just like, this is probably going to be something special. And I was just happy that they wrote me in more and let me join the team. Now, what's the story with the seafood app? Oh, my God. You, were gonna, is... you have an app about yes. octopus and someone thought it was something else. And... That's right. I, I went in, Jing Yang went in, wanted to pitch an app that's just eight recipes from his grandma of how to make octopus, you know, uh, in, in, in a Chinese way. And then Ehrlich, my investor and my buddy and uh, my co-star, TJ Miller, um, he pivoted in the room, in the pitch room. It's like, this is actually the Shazam for food. So you take a picture of, like, say, a cup of coffee, you take a picture C-food. of... Seafood. Yeah, exactly, S-E-E food. So it's his idea, but I never wanted to do it. You know, Jing Yang's a bit of an artist when it comes to that. So mm -hmm. I just kind of half-assed the app and um, made it uh, in a way... Well, a little spoiler alert, but just made it so that it only does hot dogs. So you take a picture <laughs> of hot dogs, it's going to tell you it's hot dogs. But you take a picture of spaghetti, instead of telling you it's spaghetti, it's just going to say not hot dogs. <laughs> and the, the brilliant consultants and the mind and HBO and Mike Judge and all those guys decided to make this a real app. So this app actually came out uh, simultaneously with uh, this past it's Sunday. It's real app. So it's, yeah, I'll show you. It's called Not Hot Dog. And uh, it's, <laughs> look, it's called Not Hot Dog. And you take a picture, right? You take a picture, say, of this cup. It'll tell you it's not hot dog. But if you bring me a hot dog, it'll just tell you it's hot dog. And that's all the app does. And, and, it's and why, do, on. why do people go to it? Just, just I, I think it's a fun party thing. You know, even I was using it with my buddy. He's like, dude, we got to go find some hot dogs. Or we got to try to, like, um, break the app to see if we take a picture of somebody, see if it says hot dog. Do you have any technical knowledge about things going on? In I like to pretend like I do. But, yeah, but you I, don't, right? I, don't. Uh, I, I learned a lot from the consultants. They told me what, like, the neural net is, you know, all the technology. Are you now things. recognized on the street? A lot of people come up to you? Yeah, more and more every season. And um, I think it, it's a bit of a weird thing when you're Asian, and there's not that many Asian actors out there. People always, like, talk amongst their friends. They're like, oh, my God, is that is that the guy? Is that the guy <laughs> from Silicon Valley? Because I don't really speak like that in real life anyways, you know? So it's a bit of a different character. You change and, your voice on Silicon Valley? Well, I'm much more of an accent, and, and my demeanor is is totally different. So when people come up to me, I, I feel like they, they want to make sure it's me, or else they'll be like, oh, I don't want to come off like a racist. I just I just call the random Asian guy Jing Yang, you know? Like, I'm not <laughs> trying to say that all Asian people look alike, you know, but they're like, they're Are very you, careful when they come up to me. Were you a young comedian in Hong Kong or a young actor? Mm. I was neither. Uh, I moved from Hong Kong to L.A. when I was 13. And I went to college here in UCSD, and I studied economics. I wanted to make music. I had a music minor. I, I think I was like maybe a couple classes short of a theater minor. So I always wanted to do something like that. But coming from like an Asian Chinese background, traditional Chinese family, the creative arts department, that's not really considered a career or a job. So even though I really wanted to do it, um, it just... What did your father do? My father was a financial advisor, and in so, Hong Kong, he was a businessman. Very, you know, letter of the law. So how did the acting come about in the comedy? Um, I guess I just really, I just got bored, you know. Did you start as a stand-up? I started as a stand-up. I wanted to make new friends, you know. Uh, it, it actually started after I studied abroad, right? I studied abroad in Italy, and it was the best time of my life. Every weekend would go somewhere amazing. And then when I came back, I was still hanging out with the same old buddies, playing Madden, playing NBA, like on the video games. I'm like, dude, life needs to be more than that. And then I started taking like jujitsu classes, boxing classes, trying different things, like stand up. 
And, uh, you know, just trying to make new friends, trying to expand my horizon. And, you know, I took the stand-up pretty easily, I guess. I never really had stage. You worked the clubs and everything? Yeah, absolutely. But the first club I worked was to Ha Ha Comedy Club in North Hollywood. Uh, a lot of comedians started there. And uh, it was an open mic, but it was one of the better open mics. But the catch was you had to pay $5 to get on stage for five minutes in front of, like, five indifferent comics, you know? How could you be funny in five minutes? How did this... But I guess it, it, it's... Nobody's well, funny when they first start. Did I, you do your routine on, based on Chinese? Did you play off that? Oh, yeah, I think a little bit of that. Um, or it grew to that to some degree. I think when I first started, it was literally just, like, masturbation jokes. <laughs> and, like, me watching Sports Center masturbating at the same time or something. <laughs> like, really hacky, you know, just to get some laughs. I think when you start, you don't care what you talk about. You just want to get the laughs yeah. just so you can survive those five minutes. So did you act before Silicon Valley? Valley? Not really. I mean, I took one acting class in college. I loved it, um, but not so really. So you showed up for the audition. Yeah. Uh, I guess it transitioned slowly from stand-up to acting. That was what I always wanted to do. And I was, at first, I just wanted to do more acting to help my stand-up career. You know, but then it transitioned to You're now an more. actor, right? Yeah. Uh, as of now, I haven't done stand-up in a few months. Well, you've done Patriot's Day now? You yeah. So, because I'm going to concentrate on acting and, and some writing, too, so. Uh, How old are you now? 29, going on. You've got a brilliant career in front of you. Thank you, thank you. I'm You'll get your own series. Hopefully, you know. Isn't that, isn't that yeah. logical? Yeah. Have or, they talked about that already? Yeah, writing my own movies, writing my own series, um, writing a book about myself. Hopefully, that will turn into something else also. Uh, so, yeah, just trying to, you know, I think it's a very exciting time right now. It's finally the time where it's, it's, it's whatever I'm creating, where it's a book, a script, somebody's gonna read it. So as long as it's good, as long as I make it you know, well, then, then people are gonna respond to it, and uh, it's an opportunity that's, that's very exciting. You're a hell of a talent. Oh, thank you. In our final moments, Jimmy O. Yang, I love that, <laughs> talk sharing the big screen with Mark Wahlberg, plus the Silicon Valley star will take your questions from social media, stay with us. Back with one of the stars of Silicon Valley. In fact, he may be the star of Silicon Valley. At least we're making him the star. <laughs> Jimmy O. Yang. He's not Irish. O is a middle O period Yang. Yes. Okay. What was it like to work with Wahlberg? Great guy. Great, great. Um, he just has this like intensity about <laughs> him. He just focuses and he draws you into the scene. You know, it, it, what, what, when you work in somebody like that opposite you. Yeah. Were you nervous? I was, I was, um, but luckily I prepared a lot for that role and I was so in my character that um, I was able to not think of him as Wahlberg and think of him as a police officer talking to me, you know, and that, that certainly helped. Well, it was a horrendous day in America. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, a quick game of You Only Knew. Mm. I just throw some questions at you, don't get nervous, it's not a courtroom. Okay. Funniest fan encounter. Oh, funniest? Fan encounter. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. You don't have to answer it now. Okay. Okay. I'll think about it. Person who makes you laugh the most on the set of Silicon Valley. It's gotta be T.J. Miller. He is awesome, and uh, the improv he comes up with definitely makes you alive uh, in, in in the thing. And he's so open to ideas. Just same same as Mike Judge and everybody else. He's awesome. Who would you switch places with for a day? Huh, switch places with it. Maybe Larry King. Good idea. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? I'm sure you got a great uh, phone contact oh, of everyone. Yeah, unbelievable, but don't yeah. be too Jewish. <laughs> okay. Biggest risk you ever took? Biggest risk I ever took is um, I quit an internship at Smith & Barney, a, a great financial firm, uh, to do stand-up. Whoa. What did your father think about that? He didn't like it. He was the one to hook me up with the internship. He's still hoping stand-up and comedy is just a phase for me. <laughs> place we'd find you on a day off. Ooh, uh, place you find me on a day off. I like shooting hoops in the park or just walking uh, up and down Fairfax. Um, speaking about not being too Jewish. Uh, just checking out, <laughs> checking out the sneaker stores going and uh, going to Cantor's, you know, and uh, there's a nice puppy shop there called... Um, Barks and bitches. Uh, you can go pet dogs and, you know. Uh, you don't own a dog? 
I, I do, well, kind of. What my, do you mean? My mom got this dog that I'm supposed to share with her, but I've been so busy. It's this baby pug. Her name is Toffee. You guys can follow her at Toffee Star Pug on Instagram. She's the cutest thing, but she's got, so crazy and got so much energy. She pees everywhere. So most of the time she's with my parents. I can't. I just don't have the energy. To Toffee take Star Pug. Yeah. Okay. Something you're awful at. Something I'm awful at. I, I like to think I'm, I'm pretty good yeah. at most things that I try at. So things that I'm awful at are things that I just don't want to try. Maybe like skiing, extreme sports, Shoot. motorcycle riding. I, I wouldn't want to do that. Who's your dream co-star? Oh my God, dream co-star. Oh, let me think. Maybe like Daniel Day-Lewis or Meryl Streep or something. Just Jimmy O. Yang in 10 years. Jimmy O. Yang in 10 years. Working with Daniel Day-Lewis, maybe getting an Oscar. And uh, just really, I'm very happy with what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to live in the moment. Just as long as they let me create more and do what I like to do more, that would be great. Got a couple fan questions. Mm. Brady Saltz on Twitter. Why did it take so long for you to get more screen time on Silicon Valley? I think they got to ease this character in. There's so, already so many great characters and so many great actors on the show. Uh, you know, and I, I just patiently waited for my time um, and trusted the writers, and, and, and uh, I'm just glad to be where I am. At DS Squid one on Twitter, what's your off-screen rapport with T.J. Miller like? It's great. We're actually pretty good friends. Uh, I would say he's definitely my best friend on the show. And uh, we both come from a stand-up background, so we get along really well. We hang out. I took him to watch Patriots Day. Uh, he's great. He's just such a big personality. I took him to watch Patriots Day in Marina Del Rey. And then people always get a kick out of it to see us two hang out in real life, you know. Um, and uh, after, the, after the movie, he stood up. He screamed in the movie theater, like, this is my friend Jimmy O. Yang, and he was the star in Patriots Day, and I just want you guys to know that. And then everybody started, like, kind of awkwardly just, like, clapping so he, he and like we love each other he, he's an awesome did that awesome embarrass human. you a little bit but deep down i kind of liked it maybe <laughs> you got a girlfriend i do yeah what's her name her name is sam uh sam yeah 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 I actually, samantha samantha yeah um i actually met her on the set of silicon valley she was a stand-in for amanda crew and uh we've been going out is it serious time. Uh, yeah, I would like to think so. Uh, we've been, it's, it's new. It's, you know, for two, three months. But um, I, I think we hit it off pretty well. So we'll That's see good. how it progresses. Bobby Nachos on Twitter. What's your favorite octopus recipe? Oh, my God. Uh, well, my dad used to do these, like, stir-fry little baby octopus where they, you know, just separate the head and, 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 the, and the tentacles. And I used to stir-fry with some bell peppers, and it's really good. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff, like the uh, fried calamaris, as you know, we'll call it in the Western world. But in in, in the Chinese, it's um, it's like uh, salt and pepper, deep fried uh, uh, octopus. octopus and uh, squid. Th those are all great. Those does octopus does it taste like chicken? Everything tastes like chicken. Oh, it's it's a little more rubbery taste. Oh oh my God! You know what? Growing up. Um, I forgot if it was octopus or squid, but my dad used to bring these things from Shanghai. It's a local Shanghai thing. It's uh, squid or octopus testicles. Yeah. Very you salty. Like very oh, salty. Salty. It's, uh, it's not bad. You know, it's like <laughs> a little... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a uh, longish shaped egg, and um, it's, it's salty. That's all it's I can Great remember. balls of fire. <laughs> Love you, baby. Thank you, Mr. Big Yang. thanks to my guest, Jimmy O. Yang. Be sure to see him in Silicon Valley, air Sundays, 10 p.m. on HBO. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. See you next time. <laughs>